Picture this. You're standing on a blustery afternoon atop an 80-story tower. The wind is howling so hard your jacket flaps like a flag, yet the building beneath your feet barely trembles. How does a stack of steel and glass as thin as a needle keep its cool while the sky tries to tear it apart? Today, we're traveling from the wind-whipped peaks of Taipei 101 to the dizzying new gigatolls of Saudi Arabia to uncover the unseen math that keeps skyscrapers from swaying, snapping, or simply shaking passengers sick. First, let's feel the force. When architects push a tower higher, they create a longer lever arm for nature to grab. Every extra meter multiplies the bending moment by the weight of an elephant, again and again. In short, tall buildings want to wobble. People, on the other hand, hate wobbling. At just one hundredth of one percent drift, a sway you'd barely notice, office workers start to feel seasick. Give them one percent and they'll sprint for the exits. So the modern skyscraper is, in effect, a battle between calm human stomachs and chaotic physics. Enter our invisible heroes. Hero one, stiffness. Stiffness is the brutally simple idea that if you make something thick enough, it won't bend. Early masonry behemoths like the Empire State Building fought sway by sheer bulk, solid brick and stone stacked into a fat, tapering spine. The tactic worked, but it left a hidden cost, all that dead weight. The Empire State's walls at ground level are over two meters thick, stealing valuable floor area and demanding foundations that burrow like subway tunnels. Engineers soon realized they could keep height while stripping fat by rearranging, not adding material. Cue the tube. In the 1960s, engineer Fazlur Khan thought, what if the outside walls of a building behaved like the sides of a drinking straw? Instead of scattered columns inside, he ran a dense forest of steel pipes around the perimeter, tied together by horizontal spandrel beams into a rigid square. The John Hancock Center in Chicago proved the idea by stretching 100 floors with an elegant x brace tube. But the tube family is big. One cousin, the bundled tube, lets engineers cluster several straws into a pack, some tall, some short, to create a thicker stalk. That's Sears Tower, now Willis. Another cousin, the Diagrid, trades right angles for diamonds saving up to 20% steel because triangles can't deform without changing length. That's London's Gherkin, or more technically, 30 St. Mary Axe. Yet stiffness alone can't solve everything, as towers slim down to make landlords happy, columns shrink, cores narrow, and natural frequencies drop into the nausea zone. That's where our next hero steps in. Hero 2. Damping. Think of damping as a giant shock absorber. The most cinematic version is the tuned mass damper, a concrete slug the size of a locomotive dangling near the top of a tower on hydraulic pistons. When gusts shove the building north, the slug drifts south, cancelling the motion like two waves colliding. Taipei 101's damper is a 660-ton golden sphere so iconic it has its own mascot plushies in the gift shop. Yet even that monster only works because of math. Engineers tune the weight and spring stiffness so the slug's natural frequency matches the towers. Too light and it trips late, too heavy and it hogs structural budget. The sweet spot usually lands at about 1-2% to of the total building mass, a figure discovered by literally shaking scale models on a table that mimics typhoons. Other damping tricks hide in plain sight. At One World Trade Center, giant steel and concrete outrigger trusses connect the central core to perimeter columns at key mechanical floors. When the core bends, the outriggers yank on the columns, widening the lever arm and burning up energy through friction. Some towers inject viscous dampers, industrial-sized tubes of silicon goo, between columns so motion produces heat instead of nausea. A quick fun fact, you've probably experienced a tuned mass damper at pedestrian scale. 
The Millennium Bridge in London wobbled so hard on opening day that engineers later installed underdeck dampers to kill the resonance triggered by human footsteps. Same math, smaller stage. Hero 3, shape, take Shanghai Tower's elegant spiral. Wind hitting a rectangular block builds up a wake that pulses at predictable intervals, a recipe for rhythmic resonances that grow until glass cracks. Twist the facade by one degree per floor, and those vortices stagger, starving each other of energy. In tests, the tower's helical body cut wind loads by nearly a quarter without a single extra kilogram of steel. Shape can even hide in the crown. The Burj Khalifa's tiered setbacks break up airstreams like a mountain ridge, preventing any single gust from latching on. The upcoming Jeddah Tower quietly borrowed the same idea, extending each buttress at different heights so no two sides share the same wind song. Japan, sitting on a dartboard of tectonic plates, adds another layer, base isolation. Skyscrapers like the Mori Tower perch on rubber and lead bearings that act like skateboard wheels, letting the ground slide one way while the building stays calm. In earthquakes, accelerometers in the roof report less than half the jolt felt at street level. Lessons from failure. In 1978, graduate student Diane Hartley noticed that the sleek Citicorp Center in New York might buckle under quartering winds, something the original analysis skipped. Overnight, Engineers raced to weld two-inch steel plates to critical joints while the city slept, literally bolting a near miss into history. And speaking of resonance, the 1940 Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse is the ghost story every structural engineer tells their interns. The lesson? Don't let nature discover your natural frequency before you do. Hero 4. Prediction. Decades ago, designers tested tweaks by machining wooden models and renting weeks in a wind tunnel. Today, they fire up computational fluid dynamics that crunch billions of air particles overnight. The program delivers pressure maps so granular they can spot the wobble of a window washing rig. Those numbers feed genetic algorithms that breed thousands of baby tower shapes, pruning the weakest until only the calmest survive. The new frontier Materials. Concrete was once dismissed as too heavy for super tools, until chemists spiked it with silica fumes and fly ash, pushing compressive strength past 100 megapascals. Steel is following suit with quenched and tempered alloys that laugh at previously fatal buckling loads. But the wild card is timber. Cross laminated panels stack like Lego blocks, yet perform like concrete in compression and steel in tension. Norway's Mjørstornet and Milwaukee's ascent prove wood can rise past 25 stories, hinting at hybrid towers where glulam columns team up with steel diagrids, marrying stiffness to sustainability. Risks on the horizon. Developers, smelling profit, now chase super slender towers where one floor hosts just one luxury condo. 111 West 57th in Manhattan is 24 times taller than it is wide. Even with damping, the top penthouse can sway almost half a meter. Buyers now quiz developers on redundant dampers, pre-stressed outriggers, and whether the elevator shaft doubles as a spine. Revolution at the foundation. Below ground, rotary drilled piles can be post-grouted, essentially inflated like balloons, to grip bedrock with 30% extra capacity. Some sites float entire towers on a piled raft, redistributing loads like a snowshoe so fewer piles are needed. The savings often fund better damping upstairs, proof that sometimes stability begins in the soil. Seeing the invisible, sensors inside facades detect micro strains and whisper to hydraulic pistons that stiffen in milliseconds. Digital twins age alongside the real tower, warning engineers when even a two-ton countertop in a penthouse kitchen nudges natural frequencies. In 2022, a twin of Singapore's Guoco Tower suggested tightening bolts two hours before a monsoon and saved a quarter million dollars in avoided glass replacement. Human factor, comfort and mind games. Engineers say the math stops 
when acceleration dips below 15 millig's. Psychologists disagree. Studies show even imperceptible sway can cause headaches when combined with flickering lights. Enter the occupant comfort consultant, part neurologist, part structural engineer, prescribing everything from tuned furniture mass to real time, why the lamp is moving, push notifications that soothe anxious tenants, smart skin, smart core. Some facades now embed microelectromechanical strain gauges. The skin talks to the core's dampers, adjusting hydraulic viscosity on the fly, like muscles tensing before a fall. Hudson Yards in New York is laced with fiber optic cables that read strain like a spine reads pain, feeding terabytes into cloud servers that learn the tower's mood. The race to zero carbon. Cities such as London cap whole life carbon for any building over 35 meters. Miss the budget and planning permission evaporates. That's pushing serrated facades that self-shade and modular floor plates designed to be disassembled and reused like giant Meccano sets. The skyscraper is morphing from monument to material bank. Urban implications. As towers grow safer and greener, they also grow lonelier. A survey found residents above the 55th floor have a quarter fewer casual friend encounters than neighbors below the 20th. Designers fight back by carving sky lobbies every 15 floors, double height gardens where wind waters bamboo and hopefully human friendships. Some futurists imagine stacked neighborhoods with schools at level 25, clinics at 40, and running tracks ribboning across 60. Looking ahead, some engineers bet on carbon fiber tendons that pre-stress whole towers like a tennis racket, enabling needle thin widths at unheard of heights. Others gamble on active control towers where magnetic levitation mass dampers counter wind in milliseconds, turning the building into a joystick that fights back. ETH Zurich is even testing inflatable exoskeletons that stiffen when storms approach, then relax to save material when conditions calm. Wrapping up, stiffness, damping, shape, prediction, new materials, and above all, human experience. These six pillars now share the load once carried by brute force alone. The skyline of tomorrow won't just be taller. It will be smarter, kinder, and maybe even a little empathetic. Which brings us back to you, wind whipping your jacket 80 stories above the street. Feel that? Probably not. And that's the point. You're standing inside a symphony of forces playing at a volume your body can't hear because a century of engineering has found a way to silence the storm without muting ambition. That quiet, almost imperceptible hush. That's the sound of progress holding its breath and winning.